it's a special day. It's a special day in first take. Look at the crew that I got in front of me. Mike and the Mad Dog are in the house. This is on a day that Brady retired. We didn't know it was going to happen, but damn it, it happened. It don't matter. And we, when you talk about talking about the greatest, who better to talk to than two of the greatest ever? You know it's special oh. when Molly and myself are dressed alike. I mean, Lord have mercy. I have Mike in the Mad Dog and Stephen A. in studio. Any advice for me moving forward? You're in the company of royalty, Molly. Stephen A., one of the greatest to ever do it on TV. Two of the guys that are founding fathers of sports talk radio. I mean, listen, you're in a great spot today. You're with Hall of Famers to talk about a Hall of Fame quarterback. I'll hand it back to you. Adam, thank you so much. You're Boy. the best. From one legend to a couple oh, others. Sick. They're, they're gassing you up, Mike. I know Mike. I'm getting it in the back I today. Oh, my God. I feel like they're just they're they're building you up to come break come you down right now. This is too much sweetness for me. Uh, I, I mean, say the yeah. same thing, uh, kissing our rear ends, especially uh, you. But listen, first of all, first of all, it is an honor and a privilege to have you both on this show. I sincerely mean it, all right? I'm so happy to have y'all both. I am honored. I have I grew up listening to y'all. But the other thing that's important, you know, for the audience, it's, it's, for the audience to know, it's going to be a special day to hear Mike Francesa religiously say, Doggy, I got to go with Stephen A. He's right about this. <laughs> I hope that nice. doesn't happen That's often. No, nice. I won't allow it to. Well, let's you go. and I are going to attack him let's, today. Let's go. Right. Let's go. Great I, I wish both. Brady would have picked another day. Though. Yeah, I, mean, I know. Geez. Oh, Who needs Brady he, today? He Brady. can have any day he wants. Listen, Mike, he wanted in on the fun, all right? He okay. wanted to be a part of this. Right. Let's start with you here, Stephen A. Yes. How will Tom Brady be remembered? Well, I think that the obvious is that he'll be remembered as the greatest ever. Um, but when you talk about him, you don't just talk about him as a football player. You talk about him as a leader. You talk about teammates who loved playing with him. You talk about, you know, contemporaries and competitors who revered him and they didn't hesitate to show it. We understand all of that. And then I think the greatest thing to bring up, I, I think that for me personally, him departing from Bill Belichick, guys, from Bill Belichick, I think goes a long way because I don't believe that Tom Brady would have ever been satisfied if he had ended his career in New England yep. playing under Bill Belichick. There was something. It was similar to Kobe needing to separate from Shaq to some degree. Now, you know, obviously it's the player player. In this case, it's coach player. But I think Tom Brady desperately needed to do that, and it was easier for him to make this decision. I think that's an excellent point, and he won a championship to boot. Two things, Mike, about this. One, that's a, I didn't see it earlier. That's a great Instagram thing he posted. So a little emotion. Mm -hmm. I know last year I screwed you up by coming back. So I like the fact that I was a very good minute. Well done. Excellent. That's the first thing. Second thing, you know what I keep on thinking about, Brady? What? He probably knew he was going to quit. It's 31-7 against Dallas, they're awful, and he's out there with four minutes to go, directing traffic, playing his rear end off. In the last four minutes of a blowout, he was, he was annoyed. You know, he dropped a pass. He's got a guy in this motion. You go over there. He, he played that game with a bitter end when he probably knew he was going to quit, and they were getting blown out. Tom, ba Tom Brady made himself great. He wasn't great. He wasn't great in college. He lost his job, which is what fueled him his whole life. He's the most competitive person anybody's ever met. And he worked harder than anybody ever to be this good. He made himself this good. He didn't, he didn't start out that way. He was drafted late. He had a terrible body. It took him time to do it. Now, I'm going to throw a little, you know, oil on the uh, ceremony. Okay. He's not the best regular season quarterback I've ever seen. Peyton Manning was. What? He's not the best Super Bowl quarterback who ever lived. Joe Montana is. What he is, though, mm. is the guy who played the longest and he won the most games. He won the most Super Bowls, so he will be remembered because nobody's going to play 23 years and nobody's probably ever going to have a chance to win that many Super Bowls. It's almost impossible to do. He was in the right place with the right coach, and he was that competitive. But so, let me say this. In the Super Bowl, just take the Super Bowl performances, nobody ever has competed on the level Joe Montana competed on, not even close. And in the regular season, I watch every game in the regular mm -hmm. season. The best down-to-down, -down, Sunday to Sunday quarterback I've ever seen regular season was Peyton Manning. I have to say this to you, Mike Francesa. Let me tell you something right now. Initially, when you said that, I was going to say what blasphemous rhetoric is coming out of this man's mouth. But as I think about it, I'm like this. 
He's right. Hey, he's, he's 100%. He, he wasn't the greatest regular season quarterback, nope. and he wasn't the greatest Peyton Super Bowl Manning quarterback. Was, uh, so, so, so here's my question yes. to you. My question to you is this. Do you have any issue with Tom Brady being recognized as the greatest ever no. based on what you just said about the regular season and Super Bowl performance? No, because longevity matters, and that means records. And winning all those Super Bowls matters because that's how we keep score. But if you ask me, you have one game to win. I'm picking Joe Montana. Joe Montana's Super Bowl quarterback rating was 127.8. Brady's was in the 90s. Brady was great in the Super Bowl, but let's be honest. Not he got a lot of breaks in the Super Bowl, too. Montana yes. never made a mistake in the Super Bowl, never threw an interception, yes. and he never lost. I thought he was the best Super Bowl quarterback. I thought Manning was the best, but when you add it all up and you add in all the games and all the years, and you're going to have 23 years and seven Super Bowls, nobody's going to surpass. Yeah, I think Mike hit it right in the head. I know him and I used to fight about Peyton Manning all the time yes. because I don't think Manning as his greatest. He was Mike a bad does. postseason quarterback. Not great. But, but he was like a Pippen. great regular season he quarterback. He was. We fought like Pippen, like yes. crazy with Pippen. We yes. used to fight these things yes. because I think Manning is a little overrated. I mean, what the <laughs> heck is going on here? Either a, a wedding standard. or a funeral, one or the other. Well, There's a, a standard that we have here on first take. Look uh, at the uh, clothes. Very good clothes. Uh, uh, Go ahead. The, go no, ahead. Uh, the, the Brady, you know, he's 46. You know, it's funny. Last year, I thought he should have quit because he was coming off that great game, great season. He played well against the yep. Rams. Yep. And he came back on Selection Sunday. I said, geez, really? Uh, yep. Tom, yeah, you had to finish off great. And this year, I actually think with San Francisco in the mix, a better team, yep. he may have been better off not to quit. If you look at it just from a football perspective, because you're telling me right now if he was going to play next year that San Francisco would not be interested? I think San Francisco would have been a great place for him because so do they I. have everything. So do and I. they have the interior structure on the line to protect them. He has to to be protected to play, but he was pushing the envelope because at this age, at that age, if you take a bad hit, it could be really detrimental to the rest of your life. So I think he toyed with it. I think he was as competitive. The people I know around that team told me this was the most com – he didn't even like to come out and practice. Yeah. He didn't like anybody to touch his job. He didn't want anybody to go in for him. He was that competitive his whole life because he lost his job at Michigan and scarred him, and he was that competitive. And it just shows you what you can do because he wasn't born right. with brilliant yeah. talent. Right. He made himself a brilliant player. I want to throw this at you guys. I want to ask you this question. When we watched Tampa this year, did we see – Slippage from Tom Brady, or did we see a team, Sands Bruce Arians, who departed, he went upstairs, and Todd Bowles was coaching. Obviously, something was missing with, with Byron Leftwich and Tom Brady in that offense this particular year. Did we see slippage from Tom Brady, or did we see a Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that just unraveled, and as a result of that, you know, the, the consequences were what they 10 were? 10% slippage and complete unraveling by the offense, okay. especially the offensive line, and a lot of hurt wide receivers, yeah. and he had nothing to do. That He had no team, and he saw what happens. Hey, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Aaron Rodgers. I don't care if you're Peyton Manning. I don't care if you're Tom Brady. If you don't have the players around you, you're not going to win. Yeah. It's all there is to it. Yeah. He didn't have the players around him this gotcha. year. Hey, would you like to have seen Tom Brady continue I'm, to play I'm, I'm and potentially I'm, join the Niners? I'm flowing with what Doggy said. Last year would have seemed to be the perfect time for him to retire. You're down 27-3. You come back. You're tied up with the Los Angeles Rams before Stafford hooks up with Cup and ultimately saves the day. And, and you could have rolled into the sunset because the year before you were Super Bowl champion and you went down swinging last year. This year was a dud. But because this year was a dud, you sort of find yourself thinking – Damn, that's the last look we'll see of him. And we could imagine if he was with San Francisco because they have everything. But in the end, listen, he's earned the right to make this decision. And I got to tell you, we're not going to think much about what happened this year. He's been in the league for 23 years. He only had one losing season, and it was this year. This I don't, year. I don't think he, had. he right. did so much, he does not have to leave on top. Right. He already is on such a level yeah. Good that point. he's yeah. in such rarefied yeah. air, yeah. it doesn't make any difference. Absolutely. He didn't need that. Some people do. He didn't need that. Yeah. All right, well, let's do the top five for a minute. Okay. Brady, Montana. I know you love Roger Starback. Uh, well, I think it's a lot of personal You're not going to put Rodgers in there, are you? I'll tell you right now, uh, Rodgers hasn't done enough with his career, right. but I think physically he might be the most talented quarterback Yes, I've, I've said that seen. for years. And he's, he's the a most bad accurate man. passer I've ever but he, seen. But, but he's really playoff is. games are so smart. No, he's been, he's been erratic, and he always hasn't had the best people around him in a lot of different ways. So I can't put him on that level. But I think you have to go back to Johnny Unitas. 
you got to go back to guys like that. How about Otto Graham? Put Otto, Otto Graham. Graham. There, there you go. go. You, come on, guys. you can't not mention Johnny United. Oh, Lord. I mean, look, I how can't about, football. How about guys like Patrick Mahomes? I, I'm, just, I'm just he's saying, guys. Be there. Hey, I, listen, Mahomes' I, I, career at this point. He's going to be there. Three, to be in three Super Bowls five this years. fast. Five years. Hey, he is on his way. Oh, five absolutely. straight AFC very, championship games. Very absolutely. Five straight AFC championship games. You would have Aaron Rodgers in your top five? No, he said no. No. He said no. No, but I think he's the most talented player I've ever seen. Which is what I've said. Which is what I've said on many, Physically, many occasions. Talent-wise, it's a position. But, he has more talent than anybody. But ever when seen. you talked about Peyton Manning being the greatest regular season quarterback, do you really think Aaron Rodgers is a great postseason quarterback? Could you no. think he's somebody no. that plays? So I, I, I don't I'm think he has been. No, yeah. I, I don't think. I think there's very few who are. I'll give you a guy who lifted his game dramatically in the postseason. I'm listening. Eli Manning. Yeah. Lifted yes. his he game very dramatically. Fourth quarter. Hey, he was in the he's, great... a two -time, he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. I'm not trying to disrespect Eli. I love Eli. I love the man. He's in the first always. family of football. Hey. I get it, but come on, Mike. He friend. lifted a... his game. He wasn't a great player, okay. but he lifted his but game. He lifted his game, won two Super Bowls, but in the same breath, there were many, many years in between where there was no Fine. presence whatsoever. I, I didn't say he's a great player, but how many guys yeah. have two Super Bowls and two MVPs? How many quarterbacks? Over Brady Not many. and Belichick. Five. Not many. Only five. Wow. Yeah. That's it. Top five Brady, Montana, United. Who they have the two others? You want to put Otto Graham in there? Stop it. it. I, I, I personally loved Starbucks. So how we put it. Oh, he's a big Starbucks. Oh, he loves Starbucks. He, 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 even though he lost to my Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I, what is going through your mind as you're watching that scene, some of those old clips? Man, well, we, well, that's a lot of years well, ago. Well, you know, we, and we pick up exactly where we left off. That's true. I mean, it's almost like we can do the shows together because we did so many of them for a long period of time. A bad and we don't have, yeah, <laughs> and we don't fight as much as we used to. Mike and I one time spent hours killing each other on who had a better bathroom facility, Yankee Stadium. Oh, and you were right. Park. You were right. I was wrong about that. About, that was one park. of the rare ones you won. <laughs> <laughs> about the bathroom facilities because I didn't want the Yankees to build a new stadium and blah, blah, blah. So we fought about that. What was the other? Well, Pippen. Well, we killed each other about Pippen. Oh, we because you loved him more than I did. And, and LeBron was one that came up a lot. Too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we fought you, about him a lot. And too. you were always jealous of the Yankees, Dougie. Let's just call uh, it. They won too much. You were jealous of the Yankees. You won too much. You well, thought they were buying championships. I didn't care. Yeah, but the Yankees haven't won since we broke up, though. That's the problem. And the Giants won. Three. You didn't have to that's bring it. that up. You didn't have to bring that up. But the that's point it. is, that's what it was. In those I, days, we used to win the Yankees. We used to win one, a lot. One of the great, great moments, as far as I'm concerned, in the history uh, of Mike and the Mando, you grilled, I think it was John Idzik, the uh, former GM for the Jets. Oh, my Lord, you was out at their practice facility. Oh. I mean, he drilled we this did. man. Oh, my Lord. He was like, when are you going to win? When are you going to do this? I mean, you just, I mean, you keep telling the fans one thing, you do another. I mean, it was, it was epic. You one of the saw right great, there great interviews. in that in that uh, promo, you saw one of the great guests of all time, David Stern. Oh, he was great. George Young, David Stern. David Stern was unbelievable because when he came on, he was ready to fight. He was ready Always. to be combative. And he goes, all right, dog, I'm ready for this. And Took he no was, nonsense. Oh, and it was great. He was an unbelievable guest. And he came on. What was great is he came on all the time. You see, sometimes you get a commissioner yeah. like Roger Goodell who you criticize him and he hides. But, you know, you got a guy like... Yeah. like uh, like Stern. Like Stern. Stern. He never, ever, he'd be raring accessible. to get on the show, yeah. and he'd come loaded for bear, and he was great at it. Yeah. And he'd win some of the arguments because wow. he was a bright guy. Yes, he, he was. was and so was. was George Young the same way. He'd come loaded five. for bear. Absolutely. And I used to get mad because Mike was close to Parcells, mm -hmm. very close. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really part of that relationship. Mm -hmm. So I sort of gravitated towards George, and Mike mm -hmm. had Bill. So that caused a lot of trouble there, too. Yeah. Ain't that right? Hey, they no, weren't dumb. It. One used me, the other one used dog. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, how that's, how <laughs> that's how I go. What is the shining moment of LeBron's career in your mind? Well, to me, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I mean, you're asking the wrong person because I love this first championship in Miami. He that loves was Miami. That well, was they, but they were disappointing in Miami for Excuse the whole stage. You know what? You need four, to win more. four straight trips to the finals and two hey, titles back hey, to back? They, that's a disappointment. They, they set up the team. It was, hand, it was basically hand-delivered that they were going to get there each year. And you know what? They split the baby. Well, I mean, all right, they on. split the baby, but at least they split it. That's right. number one. Number two, Dwayne Wade was not healthy for the last one. It's not like they lost when they were fully loaded and healthy. Dwayne Wade did, and he played hurt. Give him credit for that. Wasn't no load management there. He played hurt. The he best, tried. He couldn't do it. The best thing I think he did in his career was what he accomplished, dragging teams 
to the finals that okay. really couldn't win, okay. but that he dragged there that should have lost in the okay. first round. I mean, that were just awful teams. Well, what are you and talking? he was so able about to the do Eastern that. Conference at that time, hey, Mike Manzessa, still, I he, mean, you had Toronto hey, with DeMar DeRozan as their leader. Had you had awful uh, Indiana team, with Paul George, even though he was a young star. But, I mean, come on now. He had the had path to resistance roster. wasn't that great. But it's an awful roster prosperity. that he had, and he still got there, and he delivered. To me, that's what I'll remember about him. But the thing I think about him more than anything else is this guy at this age and his whole career has had the pride and the work ethic to keep himself in great Absolutely. shape. Absolutely. And he plays hard all the time. He is now, a teacher. He's, I don't like no, sitting out games. Right. But he hustles. He plays defense. He chases loose balls. He does it the right way. He Listen, plays hard. And it's rare that he misses a bunch of games. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. We don't like the fact he's that he's not Kawhi Leonard. He doesn't, he doesn't do that, okay? And, I, and I'll tell you this. I do view LeBron as a scorer because when you average 27 points per game, you have 27 points per game. He's this not a he shooter. He's not, he's not a closer. shooter. He is not a, a scorer. scorer. Yes. He said essentially that he's going to be the straight shooter and That's play right. it straight to you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. was your reaction. Yeah, that that he's going to call it like he sees it. That's what he was saying. Well, I was like, okay. Well, okay, well, if you're going to do that, that makes it very interesting because we know he knows. I think it takes a certain personality and a certain mindset to be good as an analyst. I don't think he's going to be a great analyst. Mm. I don't. And I just think he is not going to be bombastic. I don't think he's got an oversized personality outside of being Tom Brady. Uh, I think he will find other things he likes more than announcing. I just don't see that connection. I never thought Joe Montana was going to be good at it. I never thought Bill Walsh was going to be good at it. I don't think Tom Brady's going to be great but, at it. I really but, don't. But what about his love of the game? I don't think it matters. I think here you have to have a hook and bring something as an analyst and find something that catches with the audience, like Madden did. Like Madden changed everything, yep. okay? Mm -hmm. And Romo has revolutionized everything, and everyone's copying him a little bit right now mm -hmm. uh, because he found something. The bottom line is I just I always look and say not every great player is going to be a great analyst. I don't think Brady's going to be All a great right. analyst. I have to agree with you. We're up against it. We, we can revisit this guy. Mike and the Mad Dog was absolutely an iconic radio show. Absolutely incredible. Must listen to radio. As a New York City kid dreaming, you impacted us. They were so much fun, so entertaining, so informative. And two guys that are Hall of Fame worthy. I salute you, and I recognize you as absolute greatness. And even though they were very different, uh, their aim was the same. So to you guys, I say thank you for everything you've done and continue to do. All right, those fine gentlemen. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Know them all a long time. Yeah, she's right. doing. <laughs> a long time guest, obviously, on Mike and the Mad Dog. I think of Mount Rushmore, except uh, on this Mount Rushmore, there are only two people. Mike and the Mad Dog. Mike and the Mad Dog. Mike and the Mad Dog opened the door for everyone else. They are the godfathers of the sports talk medium. I never remember a day where I couldn't turn it on and get something. They personified greatness. Without Mike and the Mad Dog, there would never have been Mike and Mike or any of the many other shows that you have hopefully enjoyed over the many years. So Mike and Chris, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And Greeny means it. And yeah, he does. Do. He's, a, he's a huge we fan. We all do. Yeah. That was great. He done a, he's done a superb job. Sharp. Oh, heck, he's been, been, been a whole I lot mean, of time. Tell him, Brady, Stevie. Come on. I've already told him, and I'll tell him again. You guys made it And you easy. haven't been that bad yourself. Well, I, I want to take a little bit of a back quiet, seat today. I wanna, I'm a little quiet. A little it's been quiet. a very polite show. You're very polite. Well, you had yeah. Brady. Yeah. You Listen, couldn't go crazy. Yeah. Listen, you guys Gotta would debate everything, even bathrooms. Yeah, Mike and I had a lot of, you know. You really debated bathrooms. Well, the worst was... We didn't do, you know, we didn't talk for three months when we did a show. More than three. You know, we months. actually had a time where we're on five and a half hours a day. Yeah. Mm. And what? during every break, we had a lot of breaks because we had 18 minutes of commercials an hour. Yeah. So every break, we never spoke. Off the air, <laughs> any day, for four after the show, never spoke. About five months. And we did six months together. And when I left for summer vacation, I'd said, I went into the program director and said, I'm never working another show with them. I'm gone. And your wife, you're getting married. Your, my wife, Ro, was the one who. So you got him by Chris. Who was the peacemaker. Right, she was. She, was the, she, she invited a dog to my wedding without telling me. Get mad, dog? There we go. Okay, there we go. Oh, left hanging you know, dog. He didn't see it. He didn't see it. He didn't see it. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. 
Look, can we get a real high five? Can I get a real high five? Oh, that was just now. That was just now. But I would, I would definitely. We see everything, though. We see. Think about it. Hey guys, let me say this real quick. As a girl who grew up in Connecticut, tri-state area, listening, father, huge New York sports fan, the whole thing. This is such an honor. Seriously. Well, listen, thank you. You guys, you guys, thank him. You guys are icons. Thank him. Thank everybody for inviting me, dog, and everybody. So it was a lot of fun. Good luck with the book. Thank you, sir. I can't believe the way we, everyone dresses on the show. Is oh, really yeah. Nice? There's, a, there's a stamp. That's it. There's it's nice to see. It's there's very nice to see. That's right. So, He's getting there. Hey, He's getting there. There you go. Getting there. There sure. you go. We loved it, Mike. I love it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.